Hey guys, hope you're all doing okay. This is Rogue Hat and welcome to the complete tutorial of Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator for PC. This is going to be a detailed video about the emulator with included timestamps. However, I do recommend watching the entire video to get the full context. So without further ado, let's get started. For those of you who watched my other emulator guides, I divide the guide into different options for low-end PCs, high-end PCs, and then categorize those options as compatible, experimental for low-end or high-end PCs, and those for debugging purposes. For this emulator, it is completely different. It is such in an early stage that there isn't even proper implementation of controllers or options. The eventual support is planned, but right now you can only get a customized modded version of Xenia on GitHub which only supports a couple of games. Even after almost 8 years of development, it is still not at a level where you can run it on a low-end or mid-end PC. Maybe if you run a really lightweight game, but for heavier games, the emulator is nowhere close to being fully optimized, so sorry about that. But if you have a high-end PC, there is a big catalog of playable games. Now, they have a set of requirements, system requirements that they have on their website. So these are the minimum requirements and um, these are the recommended specifications. But again, as I mentioned, these are going to be uh, completely different depending on the game you play um, and the implementation and whether the game is in in-game state or playable state. So there are a lot of different factors that go into the playability of a game. Uh, that's why you have to keep that in mind. Now I will explain why is it in such an early stage in the next section. For a significant period of time in the 2000s specifically, consoles needed to be cheap and affordable, also accessible. Back then the CPUs weren't necessarily that powerful and affordable to be used in a console. As a workaround, console manufacturers had to develop a completely different architecture compared to a PC. This did make the consoles cheaper and accessible, but this meant a console was nowhere close to a PC. Thank God things are a lot different these days. Anyways, because of this, Xbox 360 emulator is extremely intricate to emulate. I noticed their development started in 2013 when it was a proof of concept and soon it was running a lightweight title called Frogger. I meant it was going in-game. It was going to the boot screen, but then it, uh, like it would immediately crash. From 2013 to 2018, the emulator was developing at an extremely slow pace. I wasn't even sure the emulator is in development. Um, while it was going okay for the most part, the team ran into some significant road roadblocks while emulating the Xbox 360 GPU Xenos. In some aspects, Xenos is even trickier than the Reality Synthesizer, the PS3 GPU. That's why the development was so slow, but they eventually managed to phase out the roadblocks and now the emulation is picking up pace quite rapidly. So there is your explanation as to why you can't run it on a low end to a mid end PC or why certain games don't work or why after 8 years it's not that competent. But by no means do I encourage you not to download and try this emulator on a low end to mid end PC. I still think what developers and lead developer Ben Vanek was able to do with it is hugely impressive. I have a rough idea what it takes to build an emulator in terms of programming, so it is no easy task. I highly recommend supporting these guys on Patreon, link in the description. So now let's get on, on with the emulator. Okay, to download this emulator you need to go to their official website, the so you just go to xenia.jp and pretty simple just press the download button and you can download the archive which is about 16 megabytes in size now there is a canary version the nightly build or experimental version whatever you want to call it and that can include under the hood optimizations sometimes so if you're not having any luck with the title so you might want to download the canary version and see whether those unapproved changes make a difference or not so it's totally up to you uh, but in my personal opinion i don't think that using canary is going to make much of a difference because the emulator is still not streamlined yet so if you click download then we we can just download the master build which is the stable release and then we can also download the canary version which is on github so if you go to their github page you can actually download the canary version if you just do a Google search Xenia Canary version and then you can download it from here. 
pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And after downloading, it just contains a couple of files and you don't have to install anything. These are pre-compiled files. But I should mention that you should always have DirectX Web Setup, the online one, the latest one, uh, updated graphic card drivers and all your Windows 10 drivers and Microsoft Visual C++ redistributables 2010 to 2019 x86 and x64 version. The reason is because most emulators run on the, the C++ library so that's why it's a very essential part uh, so you don't get any runtime errors. So now that we have downloaded we're just gonna extract it and I've already extracted this um, emulator right here. So I've extracted the Canary version in within the master build. So let's launch it and see what happens. Now I should warn you that this is not a feature rich um, emulator by any means, at least not yet. Um, and also it needs Vulkan. Um, it can also run on D3D12, DirectX 12, but um, it does require Vulkan for those Red Dent Redemption um, and other heavier games. So it is nearly impossible to run it on low-end PC with heavier titles. OpenGL implementation requires accuracy, which in order require um, optimization, which this emulator doesn't have it yet. Um, but be assured, I will make a part two for all of the low-end PCs and mid-end PCs with my main focus. Um, I'm gonna keep testing the builds and keep an eye out for major improvements. And when I feel like it's ready to be implemented on a low-end PC, I will make that guide. Um, so now I'm going to explain the UI and for the graphical user interface, we don't really have that many options. My last guide was on PPSSPP, which was option rich, <laughs> um, but it will definitely get there soon. So if you go into file, we have open, close, pretty self-explanatory. We have show content directory. If you want to see which directory that you want to open or which directory that you're currently working with. And then we have CPU options. These are all your CPU toggles, modes, and flags that you can use for your various games. Um, depending on the state of a game, you can actually use these um, different options and see whether they make a difference or not. Um, I'll get into detail in just a little bit. And in GPU, we have trace frames, clear, runtime, cache, with just two options. In window, we have full screen. And then in help, we have build commit on GitHub. So if you are a developer and you want to contribute to the project, then by all means then we have website and then about so i'm actually curious about about what does it say yeah. for some reason it just couldn't go to about section but that's fine so that's pretty much it for the ui and before getting into these options i should mention that if you go on to the xenia website they have a compatibility page. So if you click on the compatibility page, it will tell you all the like all the games that are playable. And even if they are playable, there might be some issues with them. So let's see the first one. It says GPU drawing corrupt, GPU drawing missing, and then says state gameplay, which means that you can actually play it, but there's no guarantee. But this one is state playable and there are no errors. So these two errors, you can actually do some research and see what kind of flags of the compiler that you can turn on or off, what kind of CPU optimizations that you can make to deal with these issues. Um, so obviously the default configuration isn't going to deal with these issues. So that's uh, how you would go about things like see this says GPU readback. So you can actually read about this issue, what it is and what kind of things do you need in your compiler or whether the emulator is capable enough or are they planning to implement this feature in a later release. That kind of required APU garbage. Um, so th these are all your issues. But some are just state playable, state gameplay. So before booting any games, I would highly recommend looking in this page and you can actually search a game here and then it will show up and says issue invalid. Um, so these are all your issues and you can actually do research one by one to see which what kind of options do you need. The reason why am I not explaining this in like cruciating detail is because there's it's not really streamlined. Like if you if you go into here, 
we we just have these options like for god's sake <laughs> these are all the options that are available to us so that's why i'm not making a streamlined guide and, uh, guide and explaining every single option in detail because these are all experimental and depending on the game you want to play and depending on the issue that it's suffering that's how you should go about things now you, you might have seen that there's nothing really in terms of options and you might assume that that's it because of its early stage that's it um, regarding options but actually it's a research emulator which means that they haven't really focused on UI but they were actually focusing on under the hood improvements so now let's get to the options and to go to the options you can either go into your documents repository your documents folder which is in your user folder and then you can go into Xenia and there will be a file called TML I believe so that's one approach to take it the other one is you can actually create a text file and we can call it portable and it's very important to call it portable now I'm gonna quit the emulator right now and launch it again so did you see something different <laughs> this is our toml file which is the configuration file now we can have access to all of our options not in here but in within the text file within this configuration file and to open it we're just going to use notepad you can also use notepad plus um, plus or any other note editor which is um, script compatible but totally up to you i don't want to go through the hassle of installing another node editor so i'm just using notepad so this is our apu options audio processing unit and as you can see they they've actually made some comments and um, explaining what these options are and what they do so again depending on your circumstances you can turn them on or off but there are some options that you should always um, keep them on or off for example there should be option in gpu uh, vsync which you should always keep it off in my opinion but if you get screen tearing effects and your pc is actually competent you can um, turn turn that on uh, but in my case it can take a toll on your performance so these are all your options we have audio cpu and they, these are all ex explanations there are way too many um, so in the later revisions these most of them are gonna be under the hood so you're not gonna have access to them unless you're a developer or you want to debug stuff but you will only have um, access to the most relevant options that are performance oriented um, I don't know when those builds are gonna be available but th they will be available and um, you can access those options through the UI instead of doing this workaround so yeah that, that's what you can do with all these options you can either set it to true or false uh, depending on the description and depending on your circumstances okay there's actually a youtube rt chronos and he made uh, the keyboard guide so these are your keys for your keyboard that you would actually use to play but as you could see there's not a keyboard mapping option here which is very disappointing actually so you just get these default keys and you can't change them there is a workaround but it is very very complicated so please keep that in mind this is our SDL control uh, game controller DB master so I'm just gonna um, extract all these files here yes to all so let's open this up and see how tricky it is to actually implement so this is the windows version and then we have the linux mac os ios and you can actually map your keys here so this is the controller and i have no idea what these are um I, I, these are a controller but i have never heard of them so um Then we have all these different options so if you want to create a custom mapping you can actually do it from here um, add 
the address and then the type of your controller which is keyboard then you can assign these controllers like this you can save it and hopefully it should work but there is also one more thing that you have to do um, before you can actually run it if you we have to open that toml file again So if we scroll down and we go to HID, we have to replace it with SDI. SDL. So this method is not recommended by me um, it's actually not it's a really uh, intricate method but there is a modded version of Xenia that lets you play with your mouse a golden eye remaster it actually lets you play a couple of other games as well with mouse support um, but I think the developers haven't implemented a streamlined version as I've said already um, of the emulator they haven't focused that much on UI but these are definitely coming uh, I don't have an ETA but that is a possible workaround I've already shown you the keys which keys um, are actually working but if you have a controller then it's it's a completely different experience you can actually play it with a controller and and then the the configuration file is the same if you open it up again And scroll down with HID then you can change it here but I should mention that your controller uh, should be compatible with uh, XI input so Xbox controller but if you don't have that then uh, direct input would do but you have to use SDL so there's your little controller um, I guess you could say information for you it really sucks that they don't have a dedicated section but um, I think what they've done with the emulator in terms of performance that really um, sums up the development process. So anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this little perspective. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys later.